Hey there guys, this is Chris from VFX On, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this cool looking earth zoom effect. So, as you can see, I'm zooming here on the Times Square in New York City, and to do this effect, so first off you will need to open up your uh, web browser. Here I have opened up Firefox and you should go to this website right here and you, you should download this image uh, with cloud map. You can use this here in terms of use and uh, it pretty much says that you can use it however you like. You can edit, use it commercially for private projects so pretty much do whatever you like and uh, just download this and uh, then we can move into Google Earth. So here is my Google Earth and we should first off get rid of the things that we don't need on the screen. So go to view, tool, uncheck toolbar, uncheck sidebar, um, uncheck status bar and uh, next just zoom in the place you want to make this effect zoom into. So I'm gonna zoom in the New York City Times Square. So Times Square, where are you? I think where was it? Times Square. Okay, I can't kind of locate it. Oh, here is the Times Square. So here is the Times Square, and next, which when you when you find the place you want to zoom in, um, then make sure that you're straight above place like so okay because if you will be like in any other angle the effect will not look good and it will pretty much not work so when you have found your place where you want to zoom in go to view show navigation and uh, turn that to never next what you will need is a go to view and uh, view size and set it to 920 and 1080 and when that's done now you can start taking the pictures what I did I did take picture of each uh, mouse scroll so pretty much this will be my first image uh, next scroll will be my second image and that will be third that will be fourth that will be fifth and another thing to look out after F um, for is make sure that your image is loaded as you can see here it's not loaded yet up so just make sure and wait for all the image pixels to load up so what I did I did use a print screen to save this and I passed it the image inside the Photoshop and then I just did cut out this uh, top right here and I also did cut out Google Earth uh, watermark but if you don't want to do that, you can simply press Ctrl, Alt, and S, and that's going to bring up this save window, and you can just simply save your image. What I suggest is save it like for this frame, one image, next one will be two, three, and so on. So that way it would be it would import as a sequence. And uh, yeah, so also make sure that you do not zoom in because that can mess up your count and also at some sometimes it can mess up the angle. And yeah, just ma also make sure that you do not move around. So when that's done, we can move into After Effects. So here I have my After Effects and we'll need to create a new comp. I'm gonna name this Main. And I'm going to be using high definition TV 720 uh, and 25 frames per second preset and about 22 seconds long. And click OK. And we need another comp and let's call this Earth. Click OK. Drag that. No, drag the Earth into main comp like so. And uh, next we need to import our images. So I'm going to go and make a new folder and name it images and I'm gonna go to file import multiple files and so here I have all my images and I'm gonna no except for that one 
And now actually I can also import this one. So as you can see, I did take 46 pictures in total. So I'm gonna click import. That's gonna take its time and done. Okay. Of course I did not use all of the images that I have here, that would be just crazy. But why I had so many images is because so I would uh, have an option so I would have a different options from which images to pick and right now I'm just gonna select those that I did use in my original video and I think in total I did use 14 images here are all my images I'm just gonna drag them in and uh, also what you should make sure of is that the first layer on on top here is the one that you wanna zoom in the most closest image and at the bottom is the most furthest away image so this is my last image right here and that's the most furthest away that I did take so I'm just gonna arrange these images so that I have them in some sort of a sequence right there going on and you should do the same to have the zoom effect work okay so here I have arranged my images in the correct way I need and now we have to go and pre-compose these images so I'm gonna name this image uh, image one and this one's gonna be image two and why am I pre-composing them is because uh, so it will be for me it will be easier to later on adjust the like color correction and to add mask to them and I suggest that you do the same. Of course you can use, you can leave the images as they are, but I do suggest that you do it this way. Okay, so I'm gonna be back when I have finished pre-composing all my images. Okay, so I have pre-composed all my images that I need, and uh, actually I had 15 images. So now what we need to do is I'm going to turn off all of the images except for the first two. I'm going to go here in the transform and set this opacity to 50. Now I'm just going to scale this image down so it would match this image that is behind it. should be about this big but that does not quite look correct okay that looks good so you should also like move the image around so it would fit in the correct position of course this is not does not um, fit perfectly because here is some buildings cut off but just try to make sure that it is fitting almost perfectly as good as you can and let's close that down and let's parent this image 1 to image 2 now let's turn off image 1 and turn on image 3 and let's set the opacity for image 2 to 50 again now let's scale this down why did I parent the image is because I so when I parent the image 1 now is also scaling down together with image 2 so that way I wouldn't have to rescale all of them and this also doesn't look quite correct okay I'm gonna leave it about like that okay now turn it back opacity parent image 3 and pretty much just do this through all out through all the images and I will be back when I'm done Okay, so now I finished with that and the reason why I did not show you how I did it is because uh, this tutorial is gonna take a lot of time and I'm just trying to make it as small as possible in time uh, and I think there is gonna be two parts for this so yeah um, so select all the layers and turn the uh, make sure that they are visible and turn that on and next what we need to do is we need to now while all the layers are selected now check um, pa by parent to none and make sure that you do not move any of these images right here because that's gonna mess it all up 
um, of course you can use Control Z to re uh, revert back but just just know that do not move them around at this current point so now what we will need is I'm gonna take all of these layers but except for the first one and I'm gonna parent them to image number one I'm gonna go here and transform and I'm gonna set here a scale keyframe and I'm gonna move it to let's say five seconds and I'm gonna set that to let's see to 50 percent uh, or even more like so okay so it's 98 percent and next what we need is I'm gonna go and create a layer new null object and I'm gonna name that zoom I'm also gonna go into transform for the null object select these keyframes right here on the image one um, right click and keyframe assistant and exponential scale uh, why I did that okay I'm gonna control Z right here uh, why I did it is because as you can see here the zoom effect is sort of so quick as you can see I will go one frame down it zooms so quickly to earth that a normal camera would not zoom so fast and as you can see like one frame pass it's already like really close to earth and we did not even see it and and then it just sort of like slows down so we have to fix that and that's why I did it so right click keyframe assistant and exponential scale and now if we go you can see how it zooms in smoothly and uh, all the zoom is equal and there is no sort of jumps so let's go back to time to start let's copy all of these keyframes by control C let's click here in the zoom uh, null object on the scale and simply pass these keyframes in and here by the image one I'm gonna delete all these image uh, keyframes uh, close this down select all of the images parent to um, zoom and now you can see that the zoom uh, null object is the one that is gonna uh, be in charge of the zoom but here is a little bug that we will have to fix as you can see the zoom is zooming somewhere outside of the New York City and we have to fix it so to fix that we will have to control Z back so and uh, actually let's select all the images and set the parenting to none what do we do next is uh, make sure that all the images is set to parent to none and I'm gonna select the zoom layer and I'm gonna manually move it down like let's say two pixels okay about there and select all the images set parent to zoom and just zoom in okay it needs to move a little bit more like two or one pixel so again Control Z it's in all, so all the images are not parented because what what will happen if I if I parent these all images to zoom and if I right now move the zoom all the images is moving uh, are moving with the zoom layer so that's why I'm unparenting them so select all the images uh, parent to zoom go in okay maybe even one pixel down again one down and one aside select all the images parent zoom and let's see that's okay that's a little bit better but too far away okay let's fix this so control Z so none of these images are parented by here by the position I'm gonna set this to um, one and I'm gonna yeah it takes a lot to um, set the uh, good position where it's zoom in like it takes a really long time okay let's see mm, okay let's go there let's set this back to two let's set this to let's say 
69,5. Let's select all of these images. Zoom. Let's see. Is it better? It is, but it still needs to adjust. So let's set it simply to 69. Parent zoom. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, I'm gonna be basically back when I've found in my location and you should also do the same so just try to adjust the position and when it's when it's so close to the um, actual location it is gonna get a little tricky so I use comas to locate the perfect position so uh oh that was my mistake as you as you did see I did not set all the images parent to um, to none and that way all the images didn't move aside. Okay, now let's see. That is a lot, lot better. Okay. Okay, so finally I found the position to work right here. Um, I did went kind of crazy right there because it took really long time to find this. And as you can see, it is not like really perfect or the same location I did use in my previous video, but it is fine and it does zoom into Times Square. So that's what I needed and that's what I didn't get. So that's good. How many so and that's did I just say? Um, anyway, what we need to fix now is this ugly looking um, rough and sort of cutted earth. Well, basically it looks really really bad so to fix this um, we are gonna go here um, select ellipse tool and this is the first image before the last one so if I zoom if I only take this and the last one you can see that this image right here it does sort of cut off the earth or the um, first sequence or the image of our composition. So to fix that, simply double click the ellipse tool. Um, no, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, not this time, I'm gonna only um, with the mask out of the place that I want to sort of only focus on and only sort of zoom in. And I'm gonna go and uh, for this one I'm not gonna set any feather options. So let's go further also mask and just simply take the area you are sort of focusing on like that and next image is this one okay I'm gonna solo it also just to mask it all nice round good now let's move forward and here is a little trickier um, here you can see that the mask okay wait um, let's see I think I have to delete this mask and expand it just a little bit more is there is too much of a blur around like that and I'm gonna go and just feather that nicely okay also for this image just a nice little feather around okay let's go back and solo this image just increase it to about that. Just a little bit feather because the background is sort of blurry right there, and that's not what I want. Okay, so about this far, just a little bit of mask feather. Now it should be okay. Let's see. Okay, and well, you will not see that much of a blur or bad image quality right there because we're gonna use a motion blur, and you'll pretty much it will be almost impossible to see that. Okay, and here you can see that we have an issue 
with the image color. Um, the ocean here is darker than the image below it. And to fix that, we have to go into effects, uh, color correction, brightness and contrast. And from here we can, oh, it's not the correct image, okay, cut the effect and pass it into this one, I think. I think this is the one, right? No, where is the one? Okay, so this one. Why does it seem that it is below? Right. I think it is because of the mask. Okay, I'm gonna expand the mask. Yeah, it's because of the mask right there, so... So I'm gonna leave it like, like so. Let's zoom back in. Let's take this image, pass that in, but it still is weird. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna try to fix the color. Let's see. Okay, something about like that. I'm gonna copy now this effect and pass onto this layer. I'm gonna also adjust it right there and just a tiny bit more just a little bit more on this image like so okay I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna delete this one and pass it here now the next image simply also has the same effect zoom in next image past um, next image well here we here actually we have to adjust because we can see the edges right there so let's adjust it mm, it seems something like seems something like this okay I'm gonna use a mask for this so just simply double click and bam the mask is, mask is done next image zoom in pass the effect okay double click good next image pass the effect this actually doesn't need any color uh, mask zoom in let's see past uh, that's okay okay zoom in and here you can see a really big color difference between the image below and the image above it. So if we copy the brightness and contrast, it is not going to fix it so well. So I'm not going to use brightness and contrast for this. I'm only going to use the mask. Go to mask settings and I'm going to use a feather so that it sort of blends all together like so. And if we go to the next image, which is right there, or even just a little bit, I think just a little more of a blend. I'm still gonna use the mask expansion. Something like this. Okay. Or even less. Wait, let's see. I'm gonna leave it about that because of the motion blur you will like I said will not be able to uh, see that change and also here only the mask maybe just a tiny bit of mask feather so it doesn't blend in nicely next image uh, also only the mask here we will need some mask feather like that and the final image right there also mask and uh, just a tiny bit of feather like so and uh, we're done with these settings right here if we go out and I think these both 
here. They serve, yeah, they don't have a mask, so I'm gonna use a mask on them. Okay, and the image below. That one, I need a mask. Okay. And that looks good. And actually, it's not that easy to spot. Yeah, it is easy to spot this circle right there. But when there will be motion blur and everything going on, it will be just, it will pass, swooping past. Okay, what layer is that? It is seventh. It needs just a tiny bit of feather. Like that. Because the river, oh, the ocean right there was really easy to spot a difference. So, now we are done with these settings. We we need just a little bit more of some sort of action because it seems sort of a, like boring zoom. So what am I gonna do is I'm gonna go to layer, new, adjustment layer. And I'm gonna name this layer shake. No, just simply shake. I wanted to name it shake it up, but that will be too long name. And in the effects go with slider and add this slider control. Okay. Let's set the keyframe at the beginning. Go press U on the uh, on the shake layer and I'm gonna go to like to about like here and set the slider to 5 and just before the comp ends, let's say about here I'm gonna set it to 10 and here at the end I'm gonna set it back to 0 uh, yeah, it, this at the moment does not change anything, but now let's go here in the zoom, transform, and alt click on the position so we'll have an expression window or area right there. And we're gonna type in uh, wiggle brackets 10, um, comma, this comp dot layer brackets uh, name of the of the shake layer whatever you named it I named it shake close brackets uh, dot effect and uh, brackets and now inside here we will have the name of the effect that it is inside the shake layer which is slider control close brackets uh, and uh, now again brackets and here we are gonna name what uh, which one of the slider controls sort of options to use and we need to use this slider that's pretty much the only option it have close brackets and another close brackets and now just click somewhere uh, oh my bad no just no caps like that okay now it, you can see that it does move around and it does wiggle it's not simply just zooming in anymore so that's good and you can increase that by adding or removing or changing the values of the slider control you don't have to necessarily use the ones that I use if you want more shake just change it up and like for example I'm gonna set this to I don't know like something crazy to like 100 now I'm gonna go out and as you can see it zooms like crazy so I'm gonna click Control Z to go back and now we need um, I'm gonna close this down now we need some clouds above our earth because currently there are no clouds and it does not look much of a realistic earth and to do that I'm gonna go to project I'm gonna take the first image the image that is pretty much just take any image you like I'm gonna use this one I'm gonna go and pre-compose it and I'm gonna name it a fake earth I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna go inside here click this I'm gonna find a CC 
sphere, add that effect, and I'm going to change a few settings here around. So, so by the radius, I'm going to set it to 500, uh, offset, okay, that's center, that's good. I render full light intensity, 100, uh, light height, I'm going to set that to 100 for now. Uh, light direction, uh, what was it, yeah, that's the same, ambient to 0, uh, diffuse 100, specular to 0, roughness 50, 100, that's okay, and these settings seems to be okay. And now let's go back to Earth. And we will need to create, no, actually we will need to go and import our clouds image that I hope you did download from the website I did show you. And now I'm gonna, let's say I'm gonna scale this down, or not, no I'm not gonna scale it. So also go to pre-compose, let's name this clouds uh, image which image image 15 okay and now what we need we need to add a CC sphere to this clouds image 15 layer and also let's go to oh here we have mode to screen and now let's go and open this drop down effects CC sphere rotation and now we will again have to use some expressions. So all click on X and let's start writing the expressions. So comp uh, brackets and the here we will have a composition from which we will want to sort of go in and take a look which will be fake earth. Okay then dot layer brackets and here we will type the um, the layer that we, we will gonna take some effect from inside this earth, fake earth comp and that is one dot png file that I have inside there and next type dot uh, bracket no no brackets effect bracket uh, the effect that is on this layer that we want to use CC sphere close brackets again brackets and type rotation X and just we're gonna copy this control C copy and now alt click on the rotation uh, Y and simply pass this in, change the rotation x to y, and in the end add plus 25. Next we will go to rotation z, alt click, pass it again, and change rotation x to rotation z. Okay. And now let's alt click on the radius, pass again this in, Rename this to radius. Scroll a bit down and go into light. Alt click on light intensity. Pass this in and simply rename this light intensity like that. And uh, alt click on the light height. And again, past, rename, light, teeth, and rename, and also uh, alt click on light direction, past, and uh, light direction. So, and as you can see, the the clouds right here is just a little bit, well, okay, they're really big. So to fix that, we'll go, okay, we can turn off the earth. Okay, they are huge. Okay, so go into fake earth, 
comp right there and I'm gonna no not that what I'm gonna do is let's see I think it was yeah the radius so I'm gonna scale down this to let's say I don't know, 220 let's see go back to earth and that's uh, just a tiny we need a little bit bigger okay go back to fake earth let's try 270 let's see just a little tiny itsy bitsy more so let's try 271 Mm, 275 I think that will be just a bit too much and now what we can do is we can just simply move this okay that's not what we need to do let's go back and clouds we can move them down at the moment the position that we need so the clouds are just a little bit too small so let's set this to 200 80 let's see move it just again down okay now the clouds are a little bit too big okay now set this to 278 move the clouds down okay they seem just again a little bit too big so 276 maybe Let's turn off fake earth and let's see I think this okay maybe not perfect but this looks pretty good so I'm gonna stick with these settings and like I said we will not use the fake earth that why I that's why I named it fake earth and uh, well actually what we could do simply is just use these settings but I just wanted to show you guys how to use the expressions as you can see here we did go into with this expression we did go into fake earth we did check on the we picked the uh, layer 1.png and uh, in this 1.png uh, we uh, the expression searched for an effect called CC sphere and inside that CC sphere the effect looked for radius uh, position, uh, no radius rotation uh, option. So, and I think on this note right here at this current position, I'm gonna stop. Oh no, just a little uh, last one thing is I'm gonna go and uh, parent the clouds image to zoom so that way we can zoom through these. But like about, I think about like at some point we're gonna. Um, use the opacity to turn them off so let's go into settings close this off transform set keyframe for opacity and let's see I would say about at this point I'm gonna set the opacity to or maybe even like here I'm gonna s or here okay here I'm gonna set opacity to zero select both of these and go to keyframe assistant and easy ease so that way we have them we zoom we zoom and bam they're gone so like I said I'm gonna end this part right here and there are gonna be a second part coming up over this tutorial so uh, keep an eye out for that and I will see you guys in the part 2 of this tutorial goodbye